sisters let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you into this uh, uh, discussion and today we are privileged actually to listen uh, to one of the talks that was given by the prophet uh, Russell M. Nelson and these are some of the things that uh, he spoke which were very very actually encouraging and uh, without even wasting uh, time I would like just to invite you so that you, you can listen uh, to this uh, uh, great talk by the prophet of the church. So you're welcome. We are grateful to President Eyring and President Oaks for their inspired messages and to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir for the beautiful music they have provided this Easter morning. It will now be my privilege to speak to you, brothers and sisters. Following my remarks, the choir will sing, He is Risen. The benediction will then be offered by Elder Joaquin Costa of the Seventy. What a glorious privilege it has been to celebrate Easter with you on this Sunday of General Conference. Nothing could be more fitting than to commemorate the most important event that ever occurred on this earth by worshiping the most important being who ever walked this earth. In this, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we worship him who commenced his infinite atonement in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was willing to suffer for the sins and weaknesses of each of us, which suffering caused him to bleed at every pore. He was crucified on Calvary's cross and rose the third day as the first resurrected being of our Heavenly Father's children. I love him and testify that he lives. It is he who leads and guides his church. Without our Redeemer's infinite atonement, not one of us would have hope of ever returning to our Heavenly Father. Without his resurrection, death would be the end. Our Savior's atonement made eternal life a possibility and immortality a reality for all. It is because of his transcendent mission and the peace he grants his followers that my wife Wendy and I felt comfort late on January 2nd, 2018, when we were awakened by a phone call telling us that President Thomas S. Monson had stepped through the veil. How we miss President Monson. We honor his life and his legacy. A spiritual giant, he left an indelible imprint upon all who knew him and upon the church that he loved. On Sunday, January 14th, 2018, in the upper room of the Salt Lake Temple, the First Presidency was reorganized in the simple yet sacred pattern established by the Lord. Then, at yesterday morning's solemn assembly, Members of the Church throughout the world raised their hands to confirm the earlier action taken by the Apostles. I am humbly grateful for your sustaining support. I am also grateful for those upon whose shoulders I stand. It has been my privilege to serve in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles for 34 years and to know personally Ten of the 16 previous presidents of the church. I learned much from each of them. I also owe much to my forebears. All eight of my great-grandparents were converts to the church in Europe. Each of these stalwart souls sacrificed everything to come to Zion. During subsequent generations, however, not all my ancestors remained so committed. As a result, I was not raised in a gospel-centered home. I adored my parents. They meant the world to me and taught me crucial lessons. I cannot thank them enough for the happy home life they created for me and my siblings. And yet, even as a boy, I knew I was missing something. 
One day I jumped on the streetcar, went to an LDS bookstore to find a book about the church. I loved learning about the gospel. As I came to understand the word of wisdom, I wanted my parents to live that law. So one day, when I was very young, I went to our basement and smashed on the concrete floor every bottle of liquor. <laughs> I expected my father to punish me, but he never said a word. As I matured and began to understand the magnificence of Heavenly Father's plan, I often said to myself, I don't want one more Christmas present. I just want to be sealed to my parents. That longed for event did not happen until my parents were past 80. And then it did happen. I cannot fully express the joy that I felt that day and each day. I feel that joy of their sealing and my sealing to them. In 1945, while I was in medical school, I married Dancel White in the Salt Lake Temple. She and I were blessed with nine splendid daughters and one precious son. <laughs> El ultimo. Today, our ever-growing family is one of the greatest joys of my life. In 2005, after nearly 60 years of marriage, my dear Dancel was unexpectedly called home. For a season, my grief was almost immobilizing. But the message of Easter and the promise of resurrection sustained me. Then the Lord brought Wendy Watson to my side. We were sealed in the Salt Lake Temple on April 6, 2006. How I love her. She's an extraordinary woman. A great blessing to me, to our family, and to the entire church. Each of these blessings has come as a result of seeking and heeding the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Said President Lorenzo Snow, This is the grand privilege of every Latter-day Saint, that it is our right to have the manifestations of the Spirit every day of our lives. End of quote. One of the things the Spirit has repeatedly impressed upon my mind since my new calling as President of the Church is how willing the Lord is to reveal His mind and will. The privilege of receiving revelation is one of the greatest gifts of God to his children. <coughs> Through the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, the Lord will assist us in all our righteous pursuits. I remember in an operating room, I have stood over a patient, unsure how to perform an unprecedented procedure, and experienced the Holy Ghost diagramming the technique in my mind. To strengthen my proposal to Wendy, I said to her, I know how to, how, how, I know about revelation, how to receive it. To her credit, and as I have come to learn, typical of her, she had already sought and received her own revelation about us which gave her the courage to say, yes. <laughs> As a member of the Corps of the Twelve Apostles,
Because I prayed daily for revelation and gave thanks to the Lord every time he spoke to my heart and mind. Imagine the miracle of it. Whatever our church calling, we can pray to our Heavenly Father and receive guidance and direction. Be warned about dangers and distractions and be enabled to accomplish things we simply could not do on our own. If we will truly receive the Holy Ghost and learn to discern and understand his promptings, we will be guided in matters large and small. When I recently faced the daunting task of choosing two counselors, I wondered how I could possibly choose just two from 12 men whom I love and respect. Because I know that good inspiration is based upon good information, I prayerfully met one-on-one -on -one with each apostle. I then sequestered myself in a private room in the temple and sought the Lord's will. I testify that the Lord instructed me to select President Dallin H. Oaks and President Henry B. Eyring to serve as my counselors in the First Presidency. In like manner, I testify that the Lord inspired the call of Elder Garrett W. Gong and Elder Ulysses Suarez to be ordained as his apostles. I and we welcome them to this unique brotherhood of service. When we convene as a council of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve, our meeting rooms become rooms of revelation. The Spirit is palpably present. As we wrestle with complex matters, a thrilling process unfolds as each apostle freely expresses his thoughts and point of view. Though we may differ in our initial perspectives, the love we feel for each other is constant. Our unity helps us to discern the Lord's will for his church. In our meetings, the majority never rules. We listen prayerfully to one another and talk with each other until we are united. Then when we have reached complete accord, the unifying influence of the Holy Ghost is spine tingling. We experience what the prophet Joseph Smith knew when he taught, by union of feeling, we obtain power with God. No member of the First Presidency or Quorum of the Twelve would ever leave decisions for the Lord's Church to his own best judgment. Brothers and sisters, how can we become the men and women, the Christ-like servants the Lord needs us to be? How can we find answers to questions that perplex us? If Joseph Smith's transcendent experience in the sacred grove teaches us anything, it is that the heavens are open and that God speaks to his children. The prophet Joseph Smith set a pattern for us to follow in resolving our questions. Drawn to the promise of James that if we lack wisdom, we may ask of God, the boy Joseph took his question directly to Heavenly Father. He sought personal revelation, and his seeking opened this last dispensation. In like manner, what will your seeking open for you? What wisdom do you lack? What do you feel an urgent need to know or understand? Follow the example of the prophet Joseph. Find a quiet place where you can regularly go. Humble yourself before God. Pour out your heart to your heavenly Father. Turn to him for answers and for comfort. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ about your concerns, your fears, your weaknesses. 
Yes, the very longings of your heart. And then listen. Write the thoughts that come to your mind. Record your feelings and follow through with actions that you are prompted to take. As you repeat this process day after day, month after month, year after year, you will grow into the principle of revelation. Does God really want to speak to you? Yes. As well as might man stretch forth his puny arm to stop the Missouri River in its decreed course, as to hinder the Almighty from pouring down knowledge from heaven upon the heads of the Latter-day Saints. You don't have to wonder about what is true. You do not have to wonder whom you can safely trust. Through personal revelation, you can receive your own witness that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, that Joseph Smith is a prophet of this dispensation, and that this is the Lord's Church. Regardless of what others may say or do, no one can ever take away a witness born to your heart and mind about what is true. I urge you to stretch beyond your current spiritual ability to receive personal revelation. For the Lord has promised that if thou shalt seek, thou shalt receive revelation upon revelation, knowledge upon knowledge, that thou mayest know the mysteries and peaceable things, that which bringeth joy, that which bringeth life eternal. Well, there's so much more that your Father in Heaven wants you to know. As Elder Neal A. Maxwell taught, to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, it is clear that the Father and the Son are giving away the secrets of the universe. Nothing opens the heavens quite like the combination of increased purity, exact obedience, earnest seeking, daily feasting on the words of Christ in the Book of Mormon, and regular time committed to temple and family history work. Well, to be sure, there may be times when you feel as though the heavens are closed, but I promise that as you continue to be obedient, expressing gratitude for every blessing the Lord gives you, and as you patiently honor the Lord's timetable, you will be given the knowledge and understanding you seek. Every blessing the Lord has for you, even miracles, will follow. That is what personal revelation will do for you. I am optimistic about the future. It will be filled with opportunities for each of us to progress, contribute, and take the gospel to every corner of the earth. But I am also not naive about the days ahead. We live in a world that is complex and increasingly contentious. The constant availability of social media and a 24-hour news cycle bombard us with relentless messages. If we are to have any hope of sifting through the myriad of voices and the philosophies of men that attack truth, we must learn to receive revelation. Our Savior and Redeemer Jesus Christ will perform some of his mightiest works between now and when he comes again. We will see miraculous indications that God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ preside over this church in majesty and glory. But in coming days it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, and comforting and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. My beloved brothers and sisters, 
I plead with you to increase your spiritual capacity to receive revelation. Let this Easter Sunday be a defining moment in your life. Choose to do the spiritual work required to enjoy the gift of the Holy Ghost and hear the voice of the Spirit more frequently and more clearly. With Moroni, I exhort you on this Easter Sabbath to come unto Christ and lay hold upon every good gift, beginning with the gift of the Holy Ghost, which gift can and will change your life. We are followers of Jesus Christ. The most important truth the Holy Ghost will ever witness to you is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He lives. He is our advocate with the Father, our exemplar, and our Redeemer. On this Easter Sunday, we commemorate his atoning sacrifice, his literal resurrection, and his divinity. This is his church, restored through the prophet Joseph Smith. I so testify with my expression of love for each of you. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen. Dear brothers and sisters, that is the talk uh, that was given by <coughs> uh, the prophet uh, Nelson. And uh, there are quite a number of insights there, quite a number of insights there. And uh, he's speaking a lot about we being actually spiritually self-reliant. In other words, that we should be able actually to receive our personal revelations uh, regarding truth and as to how the gospel of Jesus Christ is, is all about. And also regarding the teachings that are happening nowadays. And one thing I liked about what he said is that uh, today, especially in this uh, generation, we are living uh, 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 in a times whereby uh, it's, there's a lot of voices coming from all corners of the earth, and especially through social media. And uh, he says that we need to be very alert, especially in a lot of messages that come up, which they tend to attack truth. And uh, when we realize messages like those ones, now that is the time for us to receive our personal revelation, and we should be able actually to discern which is actually truth and which is actually not truth. But he says that those revelations, we can only be able to receive them if only we are prepared and we are in tuned uh, with the Spirit of God so that we are able to understand and be able to know when the Spirit is actually prompting us and when exactly it is not prompting us. Because in the ger generation or the times that we are in, it's a times whereby we can end up receiving a lot of voices. And sometimes if we are not careful, we may actually receive voices and we may heed to a wrong voice, thinking that it is the right voice, while in actual sense, it's a wrong voice. Now, the prophet again said, and uh, this is uh, uh, one of the quotes that uh, uh, Apostle Russell M. Ballard quoted from the prophet, and he was quoting from uh, these teachings. And uh, as the prophet had warned that in the coming days, uh, things are going to be difficult if we are not careful that we may not actually be able to receive our personal revelation that is right from the, from the Spirit of God because of what exactly is happening. And he has actually warned, especially to the entire world, anybody that can listen to this message, that the prophet is beseeching you, that you need to entune yourself so that you be able to listen uh, from the Spirit of God because we are living in a time where things are really going to be tough and it will be very difficult uh, for us to listen from the Spirit of God if we are not in tune. And uh, I remember one time speaking, talking to one of my friends from the West, okay, and uh, this is a brother that we had served a mission together. He was my companion for quite some time and uh, 
at one time I was discussing with him uh, through uh, the social media that is on Facebook and uh, he told me that uh, like uh, what they are experiencing in the western world it is actually very difficult very very difficult and at, and, and at one time he was telling me that you guys in Africa uh, are somehow a little bit better because there are some of the values and traditions that you uphold which are actually making it very easy for you to to you know to listen to the gospel and to follow the gospel because of what what exactly is happening so i i kind of like uh, didn't understand what he was actually talking about until one time i saw the documentary of what exactly is happening outside outside uh, you know outside there so when i connected the statement of my friend with what the prophet is saying i actually came to realize it is actually true because even right now in africa we are being affected there are a lot of things that are happening which may not actually be right uh, in the eyes of god and they may not actually be proper relative to what the gospel is actually teaching so that is one of the main thing that the prophet is actually warning and is exhorting uh, members of the church to be able to ensure that they study their scriptures and they keep give heed to what the spirit will always uh, be teaching them otherwise i know what the prophet has been teaching is true and what he has actually testified is actually true and uh, i know if we follow this counsel and we listen from the spirit and we learn also to receive our personal uh, revelation then we will be safe even in, in the greatest turmoil that will be happening uh, in future i know if we give heed to the spirit of god then the lord will always be able to guide us and to teach us and to remind us of the things that we are required to do and i so say in the name of our lord jesus christ amen so my dear brothers and sisters uh, that is it and I will, I will always uh, urge you because we are also looking for your support that uh, for those who have not actually subscribed we are really inviting and we're pleading with you to to subscribe and uh, you can also hit a thumbs up there because our target is that we are looking forward to hit at least a thousand subscribers and we invite you actually to support us so that we may achieve this goal Otherwise, thank you very much, and we are so much uh, grateful, and especially me, I'm so much grateful, especially when I see your comments and I listen to your insights, and I get to learn a lot of things from you. Otherwise, I'm also list hoping to listen for your insights and read your comments about how you feel about this talk. Otherwise, thank you very much, and see you uh, next time.